Hey everybody, Susan Mershon here, The Techie Mentor. Just a big thank you for listening to this podcast, the Virtual Assistant Tips, Tricks, and Advice channel where I share all things Virtual Assistant every week with no fluff, just the stuff that gets results. Hello, my friends, and welcome to this week's episode. So today's topic ties into another one of my um, Ultimate VA Success Guides. Today's topic is eight tips on how to get clients. So if you listen to my How to Get Started uh, podcast, it goes along with one of my VA Success Guides as well. And there are several of these, so you'll hear some of these podcasts that will be related to the VA Success Guides, and I'll be sure to include a link. And my VA Success Guides are really those top questions that I see t- seem to get all the time, which is how to get started, how to get clients, what do I charge, how do I package, and so I'll be doing podcasts on all of those to go along with my VA success guides. Okay, enough of that. Let's dive into eight tips on how to get clients. So first and foremost is you have to know what services are you offering? I think that's one of the most important things is getting clarity on what you want to offer. And there's a lot of people who go, well, you know, I really don't have some of the skills that maybe clients want, but I have some admin skills. Well, start with what you have. You know, do a skills assessment and make sure before you start looking for clients, you know what you're offering. Please don't just go out there and decide that whatever clients come to you, that that's what you're going to offer. That's not how you build a sustainable business. You decide what you want to offer, and then that's going to help you find your clients. Now, once you know what you're going to offer, you want to start by niching down. And I know that word scares people. And basically, niching down means all you want to do is focus your marketing on a specific target. This does not mean that you turn away clients that are not in that market. This is how you get people's attention when it comes to marketing. Marketing is all about awareness. If you want to get clients and want to build a sustainable sustainable long-term business, you need to understand marketing. Everybody who's in business for the long term uses marketing to get clients or customers. And it goes the same for you. And one of the key principles of marketing is niching. So I'm going to make it very simple for you. Okay. You really need to understand what services you're offering, and then who your niche slash target audience is. So your target audience is going to be either an industry or a profession. We're going to keep it simple. What do I mean by an industry? An industry is a group or an umbrella full of the same type of people. So the coaching industry, the VA industry, the medical industry, um, the finance industry, the le- I think I said legal already, but you get the gist, right? So an industry is a group of people. It's a specialty, if you will. And then within an industry are professions. So let's use coaching. Well, there's a business coach. There is a finance coach or a money coach. You know, under the health and wellness umbrella, there could be a yoga studio, a yoga trainer. There could be a nurse. So an industry is where you can start if you're not really sure who it is you want to work with. And then once you get kind of your feet wet in that industry, you can really focus down on a specific profession. And you can even go further. The more focused you are with your target market, the more money you're going to make. And I know that may be counterintuitive, but it's true. So you could actually say, uh, my niche is women business coaches who work with other women over 40. People go, wow, that's really focused. But you know what? It's the difference between getting the attention of a million people or getting the attention of a thousand. What are your odds of getting in front of a million people and getting someone's attention versus a thousand people? The numbers are more on your side at a thousand people. So that's why hyper focusing your target, your niche is going to make you more successful. Now, most people struggle with this. This is one of the hardest things for most people in the industry. So if you're pulling your hair out, you're going, I have no clue you're not alone. I know that may not make you feel better, but you just have to believe that you're not alone and it is one of the more difficult things to do. If you can't figure out where to start, just start with business coaches. Make it easy for yourself. 
because you can always change. That's the beauty of your business. You can always pivot and change your service offerings, who you're offering it to, but you have to have some type of target in order to learn marketing and, and how to you know, market to a specific audience to get their awareness, all that kind of stuff. So if you're stuck, start with business coaches because they know our industry very, very well. Okay. Um, how to get clients as far as getting noticed. Okay. One of the things that you can do to get noticed is share content. Okay. One of the things that a lot of other VA coaches and trainers seem to think is marketing, which it's not, is to tell their students to just join Facebook groups full of other VAs. Sorry, that's not marketing. <laughs> and that's not a long-term strategy because it just adds you to the feeding frenzy. And what I mean by that is, well, there's hundreds if not thousands of other people in that same VA Facebook group waiting for the same thing you're waiting for. They're waiting for one help wanted post and then everybody pounces on it and within a minute there's a hundred responses. How are you going to be noticed and how are you even going to get in front of that client because they're so overwhelmed from everybody who is responding. So that's the feeding frenzy. Same thing with job boards. Job boards are, you know, you may pay for a membership um, to a job board. Well, it's the same thing. Everybody in there is waiting for that same post. How do you stand out? It's not a long-term solution. Sorry to tell you. The idea of hanging out in Facebook groups is right. It's just wrong when you're hanging out waiting for a job post and you're hanging out with VAs. You should be hanging out where your clients are. So for instance, if you're looking at business coaches, and you're saying, okay, business coaches are who I'm going to go after for my services, then you should be in a group full of business coaches because that's your market, not VAs, okay? And so once you're in a group full of your target market, like business coaches, all you need to do is be helpful. It's, that, it's really that simple. Answer their questions. Share valuable content that either you've created or somebody else has created because they're going to remember you if you help them. Okay? You can also start creating your own content. So you can blog or do a podcast or do videos or, or do a Pinterest board um, and share that information based on your services. So the, the content that you create in your business is about what you sell. So if you have a VA business and you sell WordPress, that's all you should be talking about in your blog post and your YouTube videos, not how to create candles, because that's going to confuse your audience. Okay. So talked about using social media correctly. Get into the group of your market, not VAs, not VAs. Okay. And some of you might be going, oh my God, this is hard work. Yeah, it is. But it, do you want to do this for the long term? Because once you learn this, it's a rinse and repeat system. Everything I teach is a system. So today you're offering WordPress services to Word, um, to business coaches and maybe tomorrow you go, you know what? I don't want to do business coaches. I want to do interior designers. Okay. Well, you simply remove business coaches and you put in interior designers and you follow the same system to get clients. Okay. You want to be sure that you're also networking. So this is another method to getting clients. Get out in your neighborhood. Now I know at the time of this um, recording, we're still dealing with, with COVID, um, but you know, use your discretion because there's also online or virtual networking that you can do, but it's a really great way to meet people. And even if they're not in your market, you never know where referrals are gonna come from. You never know. And this is where that benefits flyer is really going to help you. Now, I know, I believe I did a podcast on benefits flyer, but there is a link to um, a blog post that talks about these and how they will make you stand out much more than just a business card. Another thing you can do to get clients is you could sub for another VA. So you could subcontract for another virtual assistant or an agency to really get good at understanding how to run a business, but also how to work with clients. So if you don't want to do all the marketing, then subbing is a great thing for you to do. Okay. I get it. It's not for everybody, but I actually subbed when I was starting because I wanted to understand how to run a business because I had no clue. And it was a really good learning opportunity for me because I saw what to do and what not to do. But I also gained experience 
while still working my full-time job, I didn't have to worry about trying to find clients because what I did was sub and they just basically sent me work. I did the work and I completed it and then got paid. So subbing is a great thing to do as well. But I think one of the most important things is to remember that not everyone is your client. Anybody who comes to you who wants to work with you may not be ideal for you. So what I call these are ideal client traits. These are the traits that you know that you work well with. And what I mean by that is if you can think in your past to somebody that you have worked with that you really gelled with, you loved working with them, and, and you step back and you think, what did you like about that relationship? Because you were working together. Oh. It was easy and we communicated and, you know, they were a no nonsense, straight to the point type person, you know, and so you really get clear on the types of people you like to work with because that's exactly what you're going to be doing in your business. And then on the flip side of that, you could actually go, hmm, who are the people that I didn't, really didn't like to work with? So for me, it's a micromanager. I don't work well with micromanagers. And so when you interview potential clients, which is one of the things you need to do before you just say yes, is you need to make sure that they fit your needs, but they also fit your ideal client traits. They, they're not a micromanager or what I call a firefighter, which is, you know, everybody's hair is on fire <laughs> and they're running around crazy because everything is behind. I don't do well with those type of people. Um, and I know that just because I've done it in the past. So just realize everybody who comes to you is not your client. It, no is okay. No is a complete sentence. You give yourself permission to say no to people who aren't right for you because if you say yes, then you're holding space for somebody who is. In other words, it's equated to a parking lot. If all the slots are full and some of those people are not ideal for you, there's nowhere for you to take on the clients that are ideal. You have to let go of the ones that aren't. So make sure that you're not working with just everybody only work with the people that are right for you. And I think, I don't know why I have to say this, but I'm going to say it, is honesty is key. Ethics are key in long-term sustainable businesses. In other words, don't take on work you don't know how to do. Don't take on work and then post in a Facebook group and say, oh my God, I don't know how to do this, but I have a client who needs this. In my Facebook group, my public Facebook group, there are clients in there. And, and I have one such um, example of somebody who took on something she didn't know how to do. And then she posted in my Facebook group, she needed help with WordPress. Well, guess who was in there? The client that she just took on, this woman just hired her to do WordPress and she sees the post that she doesn't know what she's doing. Not a good way to create a long-term successful business. Honesty, transparency is key. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I've not done a WordPress website before. I'm happy to learn and we can do it together. Nothing wrong with that, okay? So honesty and ethics are crucial because it's your reputation and word travels fast. So hopefully that's just giving you some insight. Um, I also have a free masterclass getting your dream clients masterclass that goes into a lot of this stuff in more detail and there is a link below as well of the description it's also on the success guide that goes with this podcast sign up watch it it will really give you the clarity that you need to be able to create a system to get clients long term so thanks for listening i hope you found this helpful and i'll see you guys next week